Greetings. Uh, in this video, uh, which is going to be a bit of a follow-up to the previous video, I'm going to attempt to answer a question that has been posed to me quite often, both in uh, accusatory term uh, tones as well as uh, as an honest question, namely, uh, what can be done? The, although I'm paraphrasing, what can be done about civilizational misandry? Uh, what what is the solution? What are the solutions? Now, as I've said numerous times, I don't have all the solutions. I just have my own ideas based on my observations, my readings, and the information I gather. Uh, but that said, I do have several ideas and one core idea. Um, but before we get into that, uh, we need to discuss whether or not the solution is a political one or a non-political one or something else entirely. Now, if we look at feminism uh, from a purely political angle, something I would call the capital F feminism, politicized feminism, then yes, you could say we could get rid of feminism, particularly left-wing politics, which seems to enable female entitlement even more so, and everything will be fine if we grant credence to this idea that it is a that feminism is a political ma manifestation and essentially a direct derivative of cultural Marxism, and we leave it at that. Um, but as I've pointed out numerous times, there's something much, much deeper going on. There's an underlying cause and effect that is independent of politics. After all, uh, we know that some form of feminism, you want to call it inherent female nature, whatever, has existed for at least millennia uh, in the form of male disposability, versus uh, female uh, reproductive ability being prized above all other things. And of course, this interplay, this interplay between the two things, male disposability and female rep reproductive uh, ability, has really been the, the pendulum swinging back and forth throughout all of civilization. It's really what everything runs on. Reproduction, at the end of the day, we are just animals uh, in a classical sense. We exist to propagate our DNA and uh, to, well, we're just living organisms. So political structures will inevitably, inevitably be uh, some kind of reflection of those drives and instincts. Uh, there might be other elements to them that might not be directly linked or cannot be directly linked to those things, but that's basically the underlying basis for civilization itself, reproduction, uh, male labor, resources, male ingenuity, fueled by uh, dominance hierarchy competition, with uh, women in the background uh, giving tacit orders uh, and making use of their prized reproductive vessel status. That's really simplified, reduced to the most simplified parts. That's what it's about. Now, in the previous video, I talked about disposability, male disposability, uh, being not just a phenomenon that manifests itself in the eyes of women or society at large, but in men themselves, the way we, in fact, view ourselves. And that is a large part of the problem. If we look at it in just a purely political sense, the solution seems simple. Get active in politics. Try to repeal misandric law. Get rid of, rid of rape shield laws. Blah, blah, all these things. Um, but it really just begs the question, where do these things come from? To make a statement such as they come from the left or they come from Marxist, uh, cultural Marxism isn't very descriptive at all. Why? Why, A, would women want these things? B, why would politicians empower women uh, by giving them these things? Mind you, mostly male politicians. That's not to be forgotten here. That's the dynamic we have to look at first. Why have women systematically desired these things and gotten these things, received these things on the end of the politicians? Why have the politicians chosen to say, yeah, you'll get that. 
Um, why do they kowtow and cave in to virtually every female desire? I think the answer is simple. And as I said, I presented studies on this, and so is Girl Rights What. There are, we, we all favor the female over the male. Women will side with other women, and men will side with women over their fellow men in most cases. And men, women, that is to say, women show an in-group bias, men show no such in-group bias. That is, we do not favor men uh, just because we're men. Uh, but we do, sh we do show that bias towards women, or we prefer women, in a, share the bias with women, favoring women. So it's uh, not really that surprising that politicians, mostly male politicians, would enable the wishes of women one by one for, throughout the 20th century up until now. Male politicians have yielded to the desires of women in the political sphere. Now, it could be argued, and I would grant uh, some credence to this, that a much reducing the size of government would not allow a lot of these uh, legislative, legislative, legislative measures and, and what have you to be implemented, and that's true. But we still have the core problem, male disposability, female reproductive ability. That is the core issue. It's what everything is uh, running on. It's the fuel. Uh, women, I think, recognize that we as a whole, as humanity, favors women over, over men, and so that, that makes them, in fact, much more active in the political sphere than men uh, tend to be. That is also a manifestation of men not sticking up for themselves, men viewing themselves as disposable. Because men's needs, apparently in their own eyes, as well as the rather obvious eyes of women, are just not important. Uh, men are not important in the eyes of civilization and society. So even if we were to get rid of all these political structures, we'd still have a problem, a basic problem. Never mind the fact that working within the system has been shown to be futile. Remember a while back, I, I posted a comment, or made, I, I incorporated a comment made by one of my viewers or, or subscribers regarding uh, his own futile and lost battle in, in the court system regarding child custody. I've received a few PMs from a gentlemen who shared similar stories. And so it does seem that the uh, system is just so flawed and so entrenched with uh, capital F politicized feminism that combating the system from within the system is a is a doomed enterprise from the start. And chanting over and over that when the left is defeated everything will be fine offers no solution either. What I see essentially between left and right is a tug of war. Um, it might be true that certainly, sorry, pardon me, it is true that uh, Left-wing politics tends to grow government even more, although you have so many rhinos in the American uh, political system that it's hard to really distinguish between who's left and who's right, barring perhaps Jim DeMint or uh, Ron Paul. Uh, but um, yeah, the system is just so entrenched the way it is, and it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, to effect changes. So working within the system, in my opinion, is a... Is a something doomed to failure. It is a uh, futile enterprise. And so we come back to basic human perception and basic human nature. Male disposability in the form of his, him offering resources, labor, ingenuity, creativity, intelligence, uh, in order to gain access to female reproductive ability, which is her sole attribute, usually. Uh, and because the system is so mired down in both lowercase feminism and uppercase uh, feminism, I don't see as working within the system to be a viable solution. So what is the solution? Now, this is just my idea. But I have said in various comments, and I'll spell it out now, that I believe the solution is a star starvation policy, essentially a boycott. That is to say that... The only way we'll make any progress actually changing things is if we boycott and starve the system, not participating uh, in it at all, to the, or to the extent that we, 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 we can not participate in it. 
it's very difficult to completely withdraw from all aspects of political life, I imagine, but limiting our participation. Um, more importantly, withholding male uh, resources, male ingenuity and creativity. Now, uh, there might be some parallels here with uh, the Anne Randian novel uh, Atlas Shrugged and John Galt, and I suppose that's no coincidence, but it is uh, not that I'm an entirely huge fan of her, I have several issues, but that's neither here nor there. Indeed, John Galt, his character in the film, uh, in, the, in the novel, goes on strike along with other thinkers, and although her thing is very much left-right, and civilization begins to collapse as a result. So I would offer this solution, that men withdraw their, not only their participation, but their, 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 their thoughts, their creativity, and only share it with like-minded individuals. Not these contributions to society are not honored and not respected, and they never have been. Uh, remember, the female is the divine is the divine being. She is the one who is uh, who is likened to God in the in Dante's Divine Comedy. The she is the source of love poetry. She is the source of all good. If you were to believe in the arts and music, or the the producers and composers of these things. Uh, there is no recognition of male accomplishment uh, beyond a nod of the head and a grunt to keep on keep on doing what you've been doing. So boycotting, starving the system is the solution. By and by rejecting pol uh, political ideologies, be they right wing or left wing, moving away from that, because what we really need to reject at the end of the day is basic human nature. Mind you, we've been at this game for millions of years, or I'll say a couple of hundred, maybe a couple of hundred thousand if we want to discount Homo sapiens. And it's very difficult to distinguish between what is in fact uh, socialized and what is biological. But we can put, we can be fairly certain at this point in time, at this juncture uh, in history, that if, if it's not biological, it's been around so long, this male disposability, female reproduct, uh, reproductive ability dynamic, that it's, it's been normalized to the point of a, of a gut instinct. It is reflexive. That is how we function. That's how we view ourselves. That is why we offer our coats to freezing ladies. That is why some men are willing to put themselves in front of a, of a loaded gun for the sake of a female he doesn't even know. That is why we are willing to club our fellow men to death in an effort to gain access to female reproductive resources. It is the fulcrum, the fulcrum of all of, all of this. So what we really need to do is reject that. We need to reject that dynamic to the greatest extent that we can. The problem is we have biology, instinct, and uh, normalized uh, societal expectations uh, that have been hammered into us since, uh, since the cradle all working against us. That's, I would say, the biggest, biggest issue. We all struggle with this. Even men going our own way, we struggle with this. But that in part uh, has a solution as well, and part of that is what I'm doing here, what we're all doing here on YouTube. We do have several useful tools. Now we're up against a leviathan beyond description. It is an ineffable leviathan in the sense that we're fighting against who we essentially are, because some part of us, ha some part of us can recognize that something is screwy and it's not cool. Some part of us can recognize that there's, a, there's an unethical aspect, uh, a deeply unethical aspect, to, to this dynamic of male disposability, male dominance hierarchy competition, or female reproductive resources. Uh, relationships will, whatever their form, will always continue this dynamic. So that's, that's a no-brainer. So that's what I would say is to abstain from relationships. Uh, I even, my personal opinion, this is just my opinion, I think men should do whatever they want, but I even think casual sex is potentially dangerous, or as I put it recently to a friend, casual sex isn't casual, Ra uh, rape accusations, all these things, it's very, very, any involvement with women is very, very dangerous, potentially. But what we do here, uh, on the internet in particular, is we spread information and we inform each other. Uh, I know I came to men's rights through the internet particularly through YouTube and through some uh, articles I had read. Um, I know others have come to uh, similar persuasions, uh, men's rights, through the internet as well. So what we in fact are doing as a solution is we are informing 
men one by one of their situation, their predicament, and offering possible solutions and ideas as to what they can do on an individual basis. Now, it's not going to happen soon, but eventually, the more and more men who join, join this, the more and more men who become cognizant of all of this, uh, cognizant of their own nature and their own willingness to dispose of themselves and to view themselves as, ha as having little value, when we inform them uh, of what's actually going on and they rethink that model, we will have more and more people. The more men who participate, and for all I care, women as well, and uh, though I'm highly doubtful women would want to try to starve the beast, uh, starve the, uh, the system, the better off we will be. And so what we're, th what we're doing here, it's really the, uh, we're sort of in the incipient st stages. We're just, we're, we're building uh, some, in an inf channel of information. And we're offering to men uh, information, data, statistics, and, way, and, and a way to become introspective about themselves. And one by one, uh, each man is getting touched by this information, is uh, achieving a different perception of himself, I, I should hope. I should hope. This will lead in future times to more and more men utilizing these things and choosing to starve, starve the system, not participating. Remember, civilization is dependent on, on, on male nature, on his urge to compete against other males for female reproductive resources. The only way to turn the pendulum uh, to create true equality is to destroy this dynamic entirely. Because although it has had positive benefits in some respects, after all civilization did come about, the cost in blood has been tremendous. And quite frankly, given the 7 billion people who populate the earth these days, that, that cost in blood is no longer worth it and can no longer be justified. Men are slowly waking up. And, on, on, and I, I, I would... I would not hesitate to say on, on a level uh, unseen in history, simply because of the technology. We live in the information age. Each of us is becoming aware of these things. So one by one, we are informing men, uh, we are, and that's the purpose of my channel, and I think this is part of the solution. Informing men on an individual basis, who view our videos, who become aware of these issues, and they in turn might talk to other people, and the message gets spread. But the solution is not to, uh, I think the solution is not at all a political one at the end of the day. I mean, like I said, we are trying to combat human nature itself because we know that this, this human nature, unfortunately, is deleterious to us as men, but uh, really creates a system that is by definition and from its inception uh, unequal. Uh, the male dominance hierarchy competition, uh, male... Uh, male strivings versus, for the sake of female reproductive resources, that is, that is unequal because the reproductive vessel, that is the female, will always be elevated uh, above the male. It's, it's inevitable. And it's, it's, it's just a part of our, it's a gut reflex at this point in time. That is simply the case. We don't really give it much thought. We just accept it as it is. Um, anecdotally, I'll give you... Uh, I'll give you a little example that I was uh, helping someone the other day. Uh, I didn't. I'm very aware of my own instinctual uh, urges with uh, to improve her gameplay uh, in a particular game. Someone online. Now I wasn't aware that she was a female until recently, and I noticed in the back of my mind on a subcon maybe well it wasn't subconscious because so I was aware of it. I sort of clicked. Oh, I got. I have to be extra nice to her and all these things. And I help everyone, male or female, uh, if they want help. But um, we have to be aware of these things. So we're fighting the inner beast, as it were. And the way to change things in the long run is to start small by informing each other, by, allow, by distributing this information and uh, propagating our ideas, putting them out there in open space for people to absorb and for people to, to learn from and, and to starve the system. And by the system, I just don't—I don't mean only the political one. Let's look at the relationship. The relationship is, by definition, uh, a, a perpetuation of this dynamic. It has to be. It cannot exist without this dynamic. That is the nature of a relationship. The nature of a relationship is the female uh, being uh, enjoying elevated status due to her reproductive ability, and the male 
no matter how much money he's spending or not spending, uh, putting, making himself, himself more disposable to her benefit. Uh, now, lots of men might not have an issue with this. I do have an issue with this. And I, I should hope that other men uh, gather enough conscience to uh, develop an issue with it as well, not simply accept it as the way things are. This can never be achieved at the political level. It, it is, it's achieved on a microcosmic level now. It is being achieved. And in the future, as more and more men become aware of these things, uh, they will be enjoined to do the same. And we, we could have significant numbers. And in that sense, the system can be starved. Uh, one man at a time. So my solution is to starve the system. Don't participate in relationships. Uh, reject political ideologies, uh, pay as little taxes as you can. Uh, I know that's very difficult depending on the country you live in. Um, live your life in minimal participa participation with regards to uh, those societal, societal and socially accepted norms that relate to this issue. That, at the end of the day, is my solution. Now, people are free to reject that solution or not. If you want to continue to work within a system of entrenched, entrenched capital F feminism that is constantly buttressed and bolstered by lowercase feminism, uh, because lowercase feminism has been around for at least hundreds of thousands of years, be my guess, continue to do so. But until we attack and reject the very unhealthy dynamic that we have been, this, this software, which I'm going to get to in later videos, this primitive software we've been running on for so, so long, until we reject that software and upgrade it to at least to be, to, to, to some extent, to be, at least be on somewhat on par with the hardware that we're running on these days, uh, there, there won't be a solution. This is why we need to examine what the causes are, combat those causes, starve the system, starve the, the unhealthy biological dynamic that has plagued us uh, for millennia and serves no fruitful purpose anymore other than to destroy men. And that's my solution. And thanks for watching.